Hello! This is the start of a new series. Um, this one's a little bit more historical, period-based than the previous one. However, it's going to be historical with kind of like a fantasy twist. The Foundation's Reveal 2021 competition deadline is fast approaching. If you're unfamiliar, this year's theme is Once Upon a Time with the main guideline to create something a character and a piece of literature would wear. I've chosen Jude Duarte from Holly Black's Folk of the Air series, specifically the gown she wears to Prince Dane's coronation in The Cruel Prince. I've drawn most of my inspiration for the dress from The Riverside in Spring Gown by Victor Prouvé. For the competition, the guidelines say that you only need to make one piece of clothing, so I could just make the dress and still be within the guidelines. However, I've also decided to make all of the associated undergarments, partially because I like to suffer and partially because the original inspiration gown is from 1901 and has a not so modern silhouette. So with all that in mind, I've decided to make a pair of Edwardian combinations. This is the same pair of combinations that it seems like everybody makes on YouTube. So I'll just like add one to the pile, I guess. I'm also trying to decide if I want to do the whole thing in blue. Like obviously, historical garments are not gonna be in a like weird color, they're gonna be very neutral, but it's a fantasy garment, so like why not? <laughs> Having watched a bunch of YouTube videos on combinations, it seemed like there are three main sources that are popular for patterning these. There's the manual of needlework and cutting out, authentic Victorian dressmaking techniques and the Voice of Fashion pattern book. I don't own either of the latter two, but the Manual of Needlework and Cutting Out is free online for anyone to read, so that was kind of my first choice. I like not spending money. <laughs> Bernadette Banner has a video making the same combinations. She goes into a lot of description using this source, so I'm not going to go into that in my video, but to be honest, I found this pattern really weird. <laughs> However, I'd resolved to go through with using this pattern anyways, um, but then Foundations Revealed actually released an article recently by Astrid Piepschik on very similar combinations using a pattern method from Laura Balt's Clothing for Women. The resulting pair of combinations made in that article look a bit closer to the source combinations. However, uh, because I'm mostly just kind of curious how these work out, I've decided to pattern and mock up both of these with my uh, infinite amount of time these next seven weeks. I'm gonna just go ahead and get these together and I will see you in the fitting. You silly girl, how am I supposed to get any work done? What are you doing under there? You coming out? Okay, great. Bernadette's video, she does show the extra insert for the overlap that goes on the crotch. I don't think that's actually right. I think that pattern piece is like the back crotch and then the part that dips in like that is the front and there's not really an overlap. They just kind of built that into it when they were cutting it. Like the girl's drawers for like age eight or whatever, um, it is patterned so that the center back seam curves out more and the center front seam curves in more. So I'm stitching these up and these are the drawers from Manual of Needlework, blah, blah, blah. So I've got them stitched up at the front and back seams and I know that these are not actually supposed to be completely stitched up at the crotch because they're open at the crotch as drawers were, um, but I figured for the mock-up I would stitch it up so that I can make sure that everything looks like it's fitting correctly and then leave it open in the actual garment. But I'm so confused by what's happening. So if you look at this pattern, center front, dips there. This is the part that goes under your crotch, right? And then it kind of like scoops out like that, which is super weird. Not how any kind of contemporary pattern works. Not really shaped super well for the body. And like when you put that together, it comes up with this point here, which is just like 
why? So this was my biggest qualm with this pattern to start with, and I think that I was correct in not liking this pattern. Um, if I do use this pattern, I will probably just like shave this point off a little bit. So essentially what that would be doing, kind of pulling this down a little bit so it's more of a right angle there than like this weird acute angle. Like we don't like acute angles in sewing. You want a right angle pretty much at every seam so that everything lays smoothly and doesn't come up with weird points like this. I'm gonna keep making these, I guess. Uh, I would rather just kind of not at this point, but we're already halfway in it, so we're doing it. Do you wanna join me? Oh, look at my cute girl. Mm. Nope, okay, let's go down. I've gotten them both mocked up and ready for fitting, um, so that's what I will be doing next. I just wanted to talk a little bit about each of these patterns. As it is right now, I'm kind of leaning more towards the Clothing for Women one as my final pattern that I will be using, um, but I haven't actually tried either of them on, so we'll see. Maybe I'll end up taking elements from both. Maybe they'll both suck and I'll have to start over. So they're both open in the front, right? Because that's what the original ones look like. So I've got one ruffle on each one just to show what the length will look like when it's actually like hitting where it's actually hitting my leg. Um, so the major differences between these two patterns is that um, this one is circular drawers. The drawers are a lot more voluminous, I guess. And then the drawers for this one are a little bit more rectangular shaped. So that's kind of why I'm leaning more towards this one is I think that this will get more of the look that I want. I think what I've seen other people running into in their videos on these combinations is that the drawers kind of tend to have a little too much volume in like the frontal crotch area and I'm more looking to have volume on the outside so that it gracefully like drapes downwards. Then also, oh these just keep falling off. Um, so what happens when you don't have sleeves. So this one was made just kind of by taking it directly from the book, whereas the uh, Clothing for Women one was an actual like, this is how you plot each point based on your measurements. So this one's a little bit more custom tailored to me, this one is directly taken from the book. It's got like a very, very saggy butt. <laughs> oh, can you see that? Yeah, there we go. The butt is just kind of saggy and weird, whereas this one like looks kind of more like we're used to modern wise. While I am all for historical accuracy, I'm also for not having a saggy butt, so. I'm gonna try these on and then I will see you once they're on me. All right, so in order to like make it so you guys can see the full outfit, I'm gonna have to like cut off my head, so mm. that's why you can't see my face. So the first thing I've done already is taken off the shoulders a little bit, I guess the top is actually pretty okay. Um, it's blousing basically the same way that the reference image does. However, the bottoms are just like a little tragic. There's so much bunching just like in the crotch. I could solve that kind of by pushing more of the gathering this way, but then there's still like, there's so much volume of fabric just in the crotch for some reason. I don't, I'd like, why? The length is okay on the inner side of the thigh. The outer side of the thigh, I would probably cut it more this way. The waist was already pretty slow, which should be helping it literally at all, but it's not. And I already like, I shortened this. <laughs> Very weird that it's, it doesn't seem like it's sloped at all. So that's kind of odd. It should really be coming up more like that. Um, show off some of that thigh. And then the worst part is the butt. Why? Why is it like this? Who thought that you need all the space back here? It's not flattering. <laughs> Top I would give 10 out of, like nine out of 10 because these still needed to be taken out. The bottoms I would give like a negative two out of 10. They're just so unflattering. Now I will switch to the clothing for women one. So same thing as the last one. I've already pinned up the shoulders a little bit, but I definitely like the bottoms for this one better. Uh, for one, like look at that, no, bulk in the back. It doesn't have all of the bunching in the front either. I'm just gonna pin this out here. Um, I think I will use the top from the other pattern and then just put that on the bottoms from this pattern because I don't think it's worth trying to figure out like more volume back here. I don't know. The neckline needs work, the, the shoulders need work, the arms eye needs work. I think it'll just be easier to use the top from a manual for needlework pattern and then the bottoms from this one. I don't know, should I talk to you with my face? Probably. Um, yeah, uh, fixing the patterns and then figuring out where I'm going to put all the insertion lays. So I need to mark all those placements on the pattern and I will hopefully be getting that in the mail soon. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's what we got. 
All right, so I've decided to go ahead and actually dye all of this blue. Um, I have made a decision, so that's what we're doing. If it's ugly, it's an undergarment, so it'll be fine. Um, this is my super professional setup in our hideous kitchen. Uh, we're moving soon, thankfully. Hello, baby bat. Okay, goodbye, baby bat. Cool. Um, so basically, my setup is terrible. This is my main dye pot. It's large as far as pots go, but not as far as dye pots go. Got some lace heating up in the pot. It's gotta heat up and like get wet before I stick dye on it so it takes dye evenly. Um, and then this is my fabric for the combinations in this bucket. This is the holding receptacle. This bucket is gonna be the dyeing receptacle because it's the only thing large enough to hold this fabric. so that it's not all clumping together. It's supposed to flow around in the water like it's pasta or something, I guess. Okay, here we go. Oh, well, so much for all of that. This is fine. And then this should really sit in here for like 30 minutes so that the dye all sets. So use our super technical chopsticks. Okay. I'm gonna let that sit for like 10 minutes and then I will stir it again and then sit for another 10 minutes and then stir it again and then 10 minutes and then it'll be done. It has been 10 minute interval number one so now I'm going to stir this and make sure it's not all folded in on itself. I mean it is but like that it's all dying evenly hopefully. That looks even. I don't think this is actually gonna take much dye because I think this is like entirely plastic. I think that if I just had to guess at fiber contents, I found this one, the one in the orange bucket, just like in my stash. And this one is almost certainly cotton because it feels like cotton and it is taking dye like cotton. Um, the kind of like eyelash lace is I think probably nylon because it took dye fairly well. The one that I just put into the pot that takes no dye at all is definitely polyester. Okay, so I'm worried that this is going to be a little too dark, but I think once it's like spread out, maybe it should be fine. Yeah, I don't think it looks too dark when it's like that, right? No, I think it looks nice. Okay. Well, <laughs> it didn't do nothing. It's not nothing. So this is day two of dyeing. Good morning. Um, it's Sunday and we woke up to dye things and then I guess we'll make breakfast. But um, basically this is how the cotton turned out. I think it's really pretty. Uh, so that's great. And this is how the lace turned out, which like was kind of my intention that it would be really dark blue. But then looking at it with the, with this, I think this looks like a mailman uniform. Everyone else disagrees with me, so like there's that I guess. But I think I want the lace to be a little bit closer in shade to the cotton. So we're going to be dyeing the other half of the lace in a slightly less concentrated dye amount. So if it's not perfect, that doesn't bother me. Um, I just don't want it to be quite as contrasted because this is, this is a statement. And it's not really the statement I'm looking to make. Hi baby. So when I do a test, I usually just hold it in for like 10 seconds um, and just see how that looks and then I'll rinse it. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Great, let's do it. Okay, into the dye. All right, so I've got my fabric dye. It's really pretty blue color. I'm very happy with it. I think it'll be super cute. Um, and then I also successfully I uh, got my lace dyed after the second time. The other lace was very plasticky, so it did not take the dye very well. So it is a different shade, but I'm not too concerned about it. I think it'll look fine. The Manual of Needlework and Cutting Out has a lot of instructions for how to put combinations together. Even though the pattern was not my favorite, uh, <laughs> the instructions seem really good and like they will be super helpful in getting this moving along. 
Um, however, they are entirely hand sewing instructions. Like, I would love to hand sew all of these combinations together, or all of this pair of combinations together. I think that would be super cool and a lot of fun. I love hand sewing. However, um, I do not have the luxury of time right now, <laughs> but I do have the modern convenience of an industrial sewing machine. It's right here. It's off screen. Because so much of the seaming gets covered by insertion lace, so essentially it just kind of gets cut right out there. The plan is to do all of the seams that would have insertion lace over them by machine since they'll be cut out and no one will ever know except you guys I guess. And then for all of the seams that will not be cut out I will do those by hand. So anything that will stay on the finished garment and be seen I'm gonna do by hand. And then anything that will be cut out because it's insertion lace I will just do by machine. It'll be a little bit faster, but hopefully not too far off of what it should look like when it's done. To do the strips for the ruffles, I need to cut a bunch of four inch wide strips that I tried ripping it already. This fabric does not like to rip on a straight line, so we're gonna try some other things. So I don't know if you can see it, but my pencil line I felt like was getting a little bit off, so the other thing you can do is pull out one piece of thread very carefully, and it'll make a nice straight line across your grain, um, or this is the cross grain. When I'm doing it, I'm kind of like pulling it so that uh, it looks like I'm gathering it. So since I pulled it, it's made that one thread really taut through the rest of the fabric. So you can kind of pull it, put your finger under it and feel where that thread is. You can see the faint line where that thread used to be. And then you can just cut along that line and it'll make it so it's really straight with the cross grain. All right, um, I've had a slight change in plans just from looking at more of some instructional books. And while I had previously said that I was only gonna do the seams that kind of get cut away by machine, um, I've been looking at clothing for women and they do list that a lot of stuff can be sewn by machine. I got a lot of my first round of research from Bernadette Banner's YouTube video on these same combinations and then pro like, through other people's YouTube videos, and it seems like she gets most of her information from the manual of needlework and cutting out, and these are like my really bootleg <laughs> versions of these books. So essentially, what I think is going on, I, I think Bernadette Banner has decided that most of these garments were made by hand is because her primary research seems to be of manuals essentially that are teaching people how to sew and like what better way to practice how to sew than on undergarments where nobody's gonna see it. This book really reads like teaching children how to sew. This says, <laughs> the children lift the work at the right hand top corner with the thumb and forefinger of the right hand. So basically this is, this book is all teaching children how to sew. So I think that's probably why she thinks of a lot of these garments as like being entirely hand sewn because they were used as examples for teaching children how to sew. But if you look at some other things, and granted this book came out maybe like 10 years after the manual of needlework and cutting out, so maybe there was just a change in the methods used. Like this one says that you can use a hand stitch or a machine stitch on a lot of the things. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing is anything that's sturdy enough I think to run through my machine I will be doing my machine and then all of the lace finishing I'm probably going to do by hand just because I don't want to ruin any of the lace by like too heavy a stitch. So that's where I am so far and that's kind of where I'm changing my process and this should actually help a lot by going faster. Um, so what I've done since I last checked in, I've put some facings on the drawers uh, so that they don't like have raw edges um, and so I don't have to turn anything back. So essentially what I did, this is a shaped facing and um, you can see the shaped facing section. The optimal ideal method is to use a bias facing but I thought that the curve that goes into the crotch on the back would be a little bit too dramatic for a bias so I decided to use a shape facing. Basically what you do for that is you lay the pattern down on the fabric, trace around the outer edge, and then add however much you want your facing to be 
um, plus the fold under plus seam allowance on this end. So essentially what I just did is I laid this on right sides together, stitched them together, folded them so it was wrong sides together, you fold an edge under, and then you just top stitch along the folded edge right there. And then you have a facing and it's super nice, super clean. Um, and then I can get on with sewing up these side seams and then putting the lace on them. Before I do any of the lace though, I'm gonna have to cut all of these off because I don't want eyelash lace. Um, it doesn't look correct. And also I just personally think eyelash lace is really ugly. It makes me think of little caterpillar hairs. I only cut off half or one side for this because this will be the ruffle and I'm going to cut this part off there and attach it to this. What I'm also going to do is I've machined the seam for the drawers part of the combinations and then I'm going to lay this on top, do a little stitch, split it open, fold it back, all that good stuff. I have machined this but I think instead of doing another machine stitch. Um, I'm gonna just hand overcast this because I think it'll look a little bit more delicate. The book that I'm using does say that for seams, you can just machine fell the whole thing, but I do think that it will be a little bit prettier to do it by hand. This stitch I'm doing, as I just mentioned, is a flat felled seam and I've gone over that quite a bit in the video where I made a couple flannel shirts and I talk about how to do a flat felled seam in that video, so if you are unfamiliar, please check that one out. So that's the plan, and I'm just gonna keep on moving. The goal is to get these done this week. So I've been trying to figure out how I want to attach lace to the ruffle here and I think I've found some good instructions. It says to do a French hem and then attach the lace to the fold that's created by the French hem. So if you can see the instructions here, it says to turn a narrow hem to the right side and then baste it and then fold it back to the wrong side. And I think it's called a French hem. Um, I don't know, maybe the French had something to do with it, but it's kind of like a French seam where you have to start by going the wrong way to get it to go the right way, if that makes sense. So this is the right side on top and then under side is the wrong side. So you fold it up twice like that to get your narrow hem and then you fold it back this way. Oops, that raw edge should theoretically be covered. Um, but then you have a fold here and a fold here and your raw edge is encased in the valley of that fold and then you attach your lace to the two folds here. The other thing that I wanted to note is that I ended up stitch it together by machine. It's this stitch and then I did an overhand stitch uh, kind of like a French seam, but like backwards, where I did the right sides together seam first, but then I kind of folded it in on itself so that I could then stitch these two folded edges together, which would have been like the first stitch you make in a French seam when you're sewing stuff wrong sides together. Um, and then I just kind of overhanded that to this side of the fabric as well. So everything is all nice and neat and encased and also uh, flat.
on again before I stitch anything on permanently. This is just based it on. I'm coming up against a couple issues, but I think I figured out how to fix it. So as you can see, uh, it's quite baggy. The actual garment, you're able to see the beading lace that is used as a waistband, whereas right now it would just not like be visible at all. What I've done to kind of just really quickly make it so that this is wearable and can approximate what the waistband is gonna be, I really quickly stitched this onto a one inch elastic. So as it is right now, it's definitely way too baggy. So I think mostly it's just that it's too long vertically. So if I roll the waistband up and I'm gonna set you guys down to do that. Okay, so I've rolled the waistband up, which means I've basically um, effectively taken out one inch from that bottom part there. And it's looking a lot better in the front. It looks pretty good from the side and it looks pretty good from the back as well. The main issue is that um, compared to the mannequin that this garment is housed on, my waist is much higher. I have a really short torso, so that kind of screws up the proportions a lot, which I wasn't really accounting for when I patterned all of this. Basically what that means is that the lace is gonna need to be proportionally shorter to match my torso, uh, which means that unfortunately I have to take this bottom one out, do the same thing where I shortened it all. It's just so like this space is proportionately like visually bigger and then this is a little bit smaller. That's probably gonna take me another couple hours, which is really, really unfortunate. I wanted to have this done today, but here we are, I guess. That's just kind of how this goes. I'm not like 100% happy with how it looks compared to the original, but I, I think it's just something that I need to get over because my torso is very short. As you can see, my waist to hip, very long. It's just so much longer. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. Maybe I'll get it done today. Tomorrow is Christmas, so I won't be working on this tomorrow. Um, but that's, that's where we are right now. You look so pretty, baby bat. <laughs> Are you a model?
mostly done. She's over my petticoat mock-up right now, so sorry for that. Basically, all I'm doing right now is trying to figure out where I want the straps to sit. They're definitely not in the right place, <laughs> but we'll get there.
for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, if not, that's okay too. I hope you just enjoyed coming along for the ride. Uh, yeah, so I still have a lot of work to do on my Foundations Revealed entry, so I am going to get right to that. So look out for videos on the corset and the, uh, oh, okay, alright, alright, alright. Uh, so look out for videos on the corset and the petticoat and the actual dress. So that's an important part of this contest entry. Uh, yeah, so... See you next time. Thanks for joining.